Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new. Today is my planning day. So I'm going to take you through what that is and what I do during my planning day. And if you've been watching any of my goal videos, you will know that I have not successfully had a planning day in probably four or five months now because it just has not worked out. But I do put a date on my calendar every month, which is my planning day and I focus on getting our family calendar for the next month ready. I also do a lot of homeschool planning. Today, I'm also going to be working on some garden planning and some outside projects that we have. They probably will not happen in March because I am expecting more snow on the ground, but I do want to start preparing for the new gardening season. So there's going to be a lot of that as well. Today, it's a Thursday. It's I do my planning day on the last Thursday or the fourth Thursday of the month. And that's usually my plan. <laughs> and today I woke up to Russia invading Ukraine. So I feel like planning day is a good use of my time today. Jack and Lucy have already eaten breakfast. Emma is uh, running on the treadmill right now and then she will make breakfast. I'm going to make myself some scrambled eggs. It is about 8.30. So on my planning day, the kids are still doing school, but it is a lighter day, meaning I do not do as much reading to them. I spend probably two to three hours reading to the kids a day and it's something that I really enjoy and it is not all at once because my throat would die. I don't do as many read alouds on my planning day, but the kids still do a lot of their individual work and I still will work with Lucy on her um, main, her three main things, reading, writing, and math. So I'm going to make breakfast for myself. I'm going to clean off the table because the dining room table is where I lay out everything. So I have a good uh, space to work with, a nice empty space. I do, so I'm going to do my family wall calendar, which I said my life planner, this right here. I will work on March's calendar, writing down appointments, birthdays, things like that. And then um, also doing my power sheets, which is right there. This is when I sit down and work on my goals. It is a day that I can sort of just see what my uh, progress for the month has been, as well as sort of thinking ahead to next month. I do. Uh, a lot of my prep work on this day for the month ahead. The past couple of months have been hit or miss for me for my goal setting, uh, mainly because we've had some more sickness in our house. We're not sick right now, thankfully. Um, and that threw a wrench in some of my plans and then just general busyness and trying to finish out our homeschool year strong because we have about eight weeks left eight weeks of stuff that I am actively involved in. The, Emma has a little bit more for Spanish and math and Jack has a little bit of other stuff. Lucy will probably pretty much be done um, in eight weeks. So we're winding down, trying to get things done, trying to look ahead. That was a lot of words. I'm not sure all of it made sense to you, but I'm just, <laughs> going off the top of my head right now. I'm going to make breakfast and then I will show you how I lay everything out. Okay, I haven't actually started anything, but I did also want to mention that when I am having my planning day or when I'm doing any sort of big cleaning or thing that I don't need to be actively involved um, with the kids, because they're off doing their own thing. I am almost always listening to an audiobook or a podcast. That is part of how I read so many books in a year is I will listen to a lot of audiobooks. I listen to them sped up because I'm a fast reader. So, and a lot of narrators talk very slowly and I don't know why. So I will listen to an audiobook. I use Hoopla through my library. If your library has it, it's a great service. You don't have to wait um, for audiobooks or ebooks or movies, etc., like you do with Overdrive, which is another service through the library. Um, so I will just look for an audiobook. I've been listening to The Hating Game again because I really enjoy that book. And I watched the movie recently, so I wanted to reread it. So I've been listening to that. So I'm probably going to listen to that while I'm getting everything ready. Okay, I totally got sidetracked this morning. I did clean up 
from breakfast and got some dishes done. And then I called my mom and talked to her for like 45 minutes. And then our CSA delivery came. So I haven't actually started anything and the kids are upstairs playing Minecraft and it's almost 10 o'clock and nobody has started school. So that's unfortunate, but um, I'm going to show you what I'm working on today. It's very similar uh, to my other planning day videos in what I'm working on, but uh, what I'm actually putting in the calendars is a little different. Every month is a little bit different and I concentrate on things just a little bit differently. So I will show you what I have on my table. So first, thing that I do is I lay out everything that I'm going to be working on. I like to use my dining room table because it's nice and big. I can spread everything out. This is my life planner. I use a vertical weekly life planner for everything. Everything, everything goes in here. Everything. I even track health stuff. Everything goes in there. And then this is our family command center calendar. And this is just a desk pad from Erin Condren. I put these little clips on and hang it in the kitchen. And this gets everything family related, dog related, um, errands that we need to run. All of that stuff goes on here so that everybody in the family can look at the calendar and know what's going on. Then I have my teacher planner, which is this one, my power sheets, which I'm going to go through. And then these are the little cards that I printed off from a bowl full of lemons. I bought her little cleaning card system and I laminated these last week and I have not started using them. I want to go through and read through what all of the to-do list items are and then figure out what order I want to put these in because it's a 12 week thing. So I have to figure that out. I have my garden stuff. I don't think I'm going to be buying seeds, but this is my garden journal where I do all of my garden planning. And I will just look through the seeds and the Fedco catalog has a lot of really good information in it too. And so does this Baker Creek catalog. Um, then I have my sunlight catalog. If you saw my homeschool planning 2022, 2023 video, the first part one of many I am just starting to make lists. I have my list in the back here of curriculum ideas. So I'm starting, I'm still working on that. And so I'm going to go through trying to figure out Emma's classes for next year, mainly science. I just don't know what biology we want to do. So I'm going to work on the sunlight stuff, my budget journal that I'm going to go through, my work planner, content planning. I don't have a whole lot of stuff to do in there, but I do have it. I have some new ideas for my budget planner. I think I'm going to actually use this also for all of the home stuff that I need to do. Uh, and, and so it's going to be sort of half budget, half home related tasks. I think mainly because a lot of the home related tasks cost money. And so it'll be good to have it in here for budgeting purposes. Those are the books that we have to finish out the year. That's all of the books for this year that we're doing that I need to just go through and make sure that I have everything that I need all lined up. So that's where we are. I have to unpack the CSA and then I'm going to sit down and work on the family calendar and get that done first. Once I have that done, I'm always feeling a lot better. Now, because I do my planning day the last Thursday of the month or the fourth Thursday of the month, I usually have a weekend after my planning day. I always have a weekend after my planning day. So, which is a good thing for me because I also do my power sheets prep and revisit everything that I'm supposed to be working on for February today. And so if there are a lot of things on there that I haven't gotten done, I have a weekend where I can plug in some things. I tend to do a lot of my bigger projects on the weekends because my husband is home and it's easier when he is here and I'm not managing the house and the kids by myself, obviously. <laughs> so some of our bigger projects that I have in my power sheets, I do tend to do on the weekends and it gives me some time to figure out, do I have some time to work on some of that stuff? And I probably will. Planning on scanning more of my homeschool books into a library app 
on my phone so they are more organized and I have like a digital list of all of our books because we have so many books. That's been something that I've started working on but it is nowhere near complete. So that is what is going on now. family wall calendar and my life planner now. I've made lunch. We ate lunch. It's 12.15. I was trying to research when the best deals are for sunlight and on March 1st through the 3rd they have the best deals on the current curriculum. It's not changed over until April 1st but they do have 30% off of the all subject packages which is what I used to get for the kids up through um, maybe level G, I think I did. And then we switched math, the math that we were using. So, um, because we finished up with Singapore math, which only goes through 6B. And so we were trying some other options. Um, and right now Emma's using teaching textbooks. So that isn't an option through sunlight with their all subject packages. But if you, uh, if you're looking for sunlight packages that this is the best time to purchase because they are 30% off this March 1st through the 3rd. I've done my life planner. I've done my family wall calendar. And I also went through our March homeschool calendar and got the dates down that I needed to. And now this afternoon is really just research and enjoyable things for me, which is um, looking through the homeschool catalogs, comparing uh, the Sunlight uh, new curriculum to the old curriculum and see if I want to get the new stuff or get the old stuff, I'm not sure. So that's what I'm going to do this afternoon is kind of go through that information because, you know, next week is the first week in March. So if I'm going to order, I want to order then. And also I did go through a little bit of my power sheets. I have not done my, I have not set up my power sheets for March yet. I'm going to wait until this weekend to sit down and do that. Part of my planning today is to think about the garden. It was on my January goals list to order seeds and work on planning garden, trying to figure out if I was going to start seeds, which I'm not. Most of the things that I plant are seedlings that I buy from the greenhouse and then I plant a lot from seed like squash and green beans and potatoes and carrots and kale. That kind of stuff is planted directly into the ground, but I do plant some seedlings. I I'm crossing my fingers that I will be able to find what I need. Usually I can find it at the greenhouse. It's been a little bit more challenging the past couple of years to find the specific seedlings that I want um, and make sure that I get them early enough, but uh, I am just going to pray for the best. I just have this little notebook which I keep what seeds I have, what I'm planting, where I'm planting it. I'll draw out a little map of my garden and where I plant things because I always hope to put sticks in the ground to label what I'm growing where, but sometimes those sticks get pulled up or they go missing or I forget to put them in. So it's better if I just have a little map in a notebook and then I know what everything is. I don't grow like a ton of different varieties so I can usually tell <laughs> what it is once it comes up. So I need to do that and if if you do not garden but you are hoping to start gardening in the future, I do have a couple of resources I wanted to share uh, that I used. We used to live, our old house had, it was like a quarter of an acre property so uh, it wasn't even a full quarter of an acre. It was like 0.2, I think, uh, acres. And so we had very little space. 
in the backyard for gardening. So I use the square foot gardening method, which is awesome. I definitely recommend it. There's so much good information in here. Very, very useful book. Then the other book that I have is the Backyard Homestead, which I got many years ago. And this, it says from a quarter of an acre, you can harvest 1400 eggs, 50 pounds of wheat, 60 pounds of fruit, 2000 pounds of vegetables, 280 pounds of pork and 75 pounds of nuts. And it really just shows you what you can do with your property when you don't have a ton of property. Obviously, if you don't have a ton of property, this may not work, but you can certainly take ideas from books like this and from books like this and make them work for the area that you live in. And then the other thing that I do is I use um, earth boxes, which I got my first earth boxes. Whoa, when did I get them? 2006 and I'm still using them. I am replacing one this year. I just ordered it off of Amazon. You can get them at a garden center at Home Depot or Lowe's usually. I happen to purchase one off of Amazon because it was a good price. And these are essentially self-watering containers and they produce so much food for us. I really like them. The things that I mainly grow are um, heirloom tomatoes because I have trouble growing heirloom tomatoes in the ground. They do not produce as well. I usually grow uh, Roma tomatoes in the ground and those do great, but heirloom tomatoes do not do well in the ground for me. <laughs> I don't know why. And then I also do jalapenos. I get enough jalapenos for our entire year from my earth boxes. I usually end up freezing maybe three to four gallon bags of jalapenos. And then green peppers and um, what is the other thing that I tend to grow? Cucumbers. So all of those things I tend to do in the earth boxes. I do try and grow cucumbers in the ground as well. Sometimes they do really well. Sometimes they do not do well. Sometimes my watering is uneven and you can tell that by the cucumbers, the fruit that they provide. So those are those are some resources if you're new to gardening or if you're a veteran gardener but you don't have a ton of space. These are some of the resources that I use, especially those earth boxes. Yeah, so I'm gonna go through my seed catalogs. Like I said before, I don't think I'm going to be ordering any seeds, but I do like to look at some of the varieties and then I need to make my list of things that I definitely want to grow. So I make a list of things that we want to grow, but mainly things that we will eat. That is all stuff that I'm going to be working on right now and just getting that list down of things that we need and things that I'm hoping to accomplish. It'll all go in that little notebook. And so I don't have to think about gardening all month long when I know that I'm going to work on it on my planning day. So that's just another reason that this planning day really works for me because it is time that I've specifically set aside to think and that is the big part of this planning day just having time set aside so i can think through some bigger projects and stuff that i need to get done but maybe in the day-to-day -day of our homeschool life i don't have enough time to really deep dive on i can only make like short little notes of things that just come to my mind here and there um, so when i have more dedicated time to sit down and concentrate on these things it's obviously useful, useful use of my time. <laughs> so that is what I'm working on right now. And the kids are just playing and yeah, so, so far so good. So I've gotten most of my stuff done. It, we still have plenty of time left in the day. The kids are still playing and I am hoping to get some reading done with them this afternoon. I'm not going to do my power sheets today. I thought that I would, but I'm going to work on them this weekend. And that's mainly because I'm hoping to do a little bit more in the basement um, this weekend. That is actually not on my power sheets right now, but depending on how much I can get done in the basement, uh, scanning books, etc., that will determine how much of that stuff I put on my March tending list. 
In February, I did have pantry and kitchen declutter, which I have not done, and I don't know if I will get to that this weekend either. So those may have to go forward on uh, my March tending list. So I'm just going to wait until probably Sunday afternoon to sit down and do that. We're supposed to get a big storm tomorrow after it was 65 degrees yesterday. It was beautiful. We were all outside most of the day. <laughs> and we're supposed to get I think like eight to ten inches of snow maybe tomorrow five to eight eight to ten something like that so yeah um but thank you guys so much for watching if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you have any questions about anything that I've talked about please let me know in the comments or you can contact me my contact information is in the description box like it always is and I know a lot of you will reach out individually that way and I appreciate that yeah so thank you guys so much for watching my planning day video and I will see you in the next video guys bye